Welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where professionals in the field inform, educate and inspire the community to be healthier and have a balanced lifestyle. Our first guest today is Lifestyle GP, Dr. Avi Charlton, and we will be talking about whether a low carb diet is the key to weight loss. Welcome Dr. Avi, it's great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. So have you had your own personal experience with a low carb diet? Interesting you say that. About a few years ago, I started my own lifestyle change. I wanted to lose some fat. I joined a gym and I participated in an eight week body transformation challenge. I just did it for fun. My personal trainer prescribed me a diet. I had to follow a spreadsheet with so much protein, so much fat and so much carbohydrates. And turns out that was a low carb diet. After eight weeks, I lost four kilos and I was very happy. That's about the fat that I've wanted to lose. And I was so interested in this diet. I dived into the science. I learned a bit. And as a GP, I understand what happened to our body. So I learned a bit more, did lots of courses, and I started to use it on my patients. I started to tell my patients that we need to really cut back on carbohydrates if you want to lose weight. The carbohydrates include the sugar, the processed foods, and also the bread, potato, pasta, lots of processed foods that's got sugar in the in the ingredients. There's actually so many different names of sugar and the marketing try to hide it. It's 56 names of sugar. So you really have to look at the labels and understand what's in the package. So with the low carb diet, we have to really cut back on the carbohydrates and we have to eat much more of meat, eggs, chicken, fish and pork and lamb and veggies. With the vegetables, we need to concentrate on eating above ground vegetables rather than the starchy potatoes, sweet potatoes and pumpkins, all those starchy vegetables. And uh, if we prioritise eating more protein, adding healthy fat to our diet, that is a really low carb diet, we can include a little bit of fruit, especially the berries are low carb fruit and really stay away from high sugar fruit. If we eat when we're hungry, reducing the amount of snacks that we eat, that will help us to burn our fat that we don't want and that will help with losing weight. A standard Australian diet or standard American diet is usually 200 to up to 500 grams of carbohydrates a day, especially when you eat cereal and oats and bread and then desserts and sugar and maybe some snacking on some chocolate. So a low carb diet is usually below 50 to 100 gram a day. And there's also variations called ketogenic diet, which is even less, like less than 20 gram of carbohydrates a day. So going on a low carb diet is dramatic reducing your carbohydrate intake and we can teach our body to not burn the glucose that we eat and we can start to burn the fat that we want to get rid of. Quite often doing that we can reduce our bloating, our bowel gets better and we can reduce our belly fat. We can feel better, feel more energy and feel more, more vibrant and we can deal with our day-to-day -day stresses better. So with more meat in the diet, I think we sometimes think there'll be an increase in cholesterol levels. Is that the case? Yeah, a lot of people are worried about eating too much fat, too much meat will increase your total cholesterol. There's actually new science is saying that it's not just the total cholesterol that is of worry. It's more the triglyceride, which is the other part in the cholesterol profile and the good cholesterol, which is the HDL. So some people have heard that about the ratio. So the ratio between the triglyceride and the HDL is much more important and informed us the risk of heart disease, cardiovascular risk, rather than the total cholesterol. So there's new science saying that inflammation is important about increasing your risk of heart attacks and the total cholesterol might not be as important and the bad cholesterol 
might not be so important either. So we sh really should look at the whole profile, the whole person to assess the risk of heart attacks. I see, very interesting. And do you have any advice for our viewers to, for them to embark on this journey now of a low carb diet, anything they can start today? Yeah, absolutely. With changing your lifestyle, changing your diet, it's important for your, pay, for your viewers to follow a program or seek help with a professional that is in tune with dealing with the low carb diet. They can do it gradually, especially with reducing sugar and processed foods. Nobody should be eating too much sugar and processed foods. It's highly inflammatory, it damages your health and it's highly addictive. So once you start eating a piece of chocolate, you want to eat more, sh more chocolate, more sugars. And um, the next step is eating more protein, more real food, eggs, chicken, fish, meat. And quite often that will improve the health, improve the nutrition. We can add lots of vegetables, above ground vegetables, staying away from too much starchy vegetables. And we can learn to read food labels. Don't eat too much processed foods and chemicals, numbers. And read the really fine prints of the food labels. And um, doing that, they can follow a program, learn to how to improve their life and quite often losing weight and people will feel much more energy. They can think better, feel better in themselves, less bloated, reduce the risk of chronic diseases like metabolic syndrome, diabetes and even Alzheimer's disease, cancer, inflammation, aches and pains. So adopting a low carb diet can have tremendous health benefits. Now lots of studies showing that is the case. Wow, it sounds incredible. Thank you for all of that information. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about a low carb diet for weight loss and Dr. A.V. Charlton, please visit her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And after the break, we will be back with another interesting guest and another interesting topic. Stay tuned. After the break, we have international meditation teacher and coach, Daniela Damore, talking about personal evolution and conscious creating. Welcome back. We have international meditation teacher and coach Daniela Demore here to discuss the topic of personal evolution and conscious creation. Welcome Daniela. Thank you. Thank you very much, Megan. Daniela, personal evolution and conscious creation, what does it really mean? Well, it's a big topic, really, and it's very popular at the moment, you know, with uh, especially after the movie The Secret and various things like that, Laws of Attraction. But really what it means is in my belief, of course, uh, what it means is our own personal journey of evolution, you know, being the spiritual uh, beings, having this human experience, and how through using the creative, the universal creative energy to create into our lives, what we're doing is learning about our own power, our personal power. And the more and more we learn about our personal power, then the more we are evolving as these spiritual beings, right? Yeah, so it seems like a very complex, very deep topic, and it kind of is, but really at its core, the simplicity of this beautiful topic is just to remember that we are creators. We are creators, like if the creator created universes, created this world, created us, therefore in the likeness of, of it, therefore we're creators, right? So when we're creating, we are honoring that universal energy, whatever that is for you, whether you call it God or Buddha or whatever you want to call it. Whereas when we're not allowing ourselves to create through uh, fears, various fears and doubts and insecurities, then we're really not honoring the Creator and therefore not honoring ourselves. So the more and more we can honor that in ourselves and take that power back 
it's not selfish to do that. I think a lot of people think, oh, but I'm being selfish if I do that. No, you're, you're not being selfish because to love yourself and to honor yourself, then you are, you know your power, you know who you are. And I think what happens then is we become kinder and more compassionate people. Daniela, how could we apply this in our everyday life? Well, you already do. You already do, whether you're conscious of it or not. And that's why I say conscious creating is about becoming conscious of what you do. And that, again, is about taking that personal power back and saying, oh, I'm creating this because I'm angry today or I'm upset today or I'm happy today. You know, we create all the time. Everything you have in your life right now, every single thing, you created it. Now, most of the things that we have in our life right now are good things, are really positive things, right? But we tend to focus on the things that are lacking or we don't have, right? So we think life's hard. And when we understand that we have the power to create things in our life, we stop blaming people. We stop pointing the finger. Well, I'm like this because of my parents, the government, you know, whoever, right? We, we stop doing that because we're owning our power. So it is, it comes down to basically self-responsibility. And when we're responsible for all of the thoughts and actions that we take, that makes us powerful, makes us powerful. And we're powerful because we know who we are. We know what we want. We know what we like and what we don't like. And I guarantee, despite the more than 8 billion people on the planet, we all have different likes and dislikes. Not everybody wants the same thing. And even if they are, even if they do want something similar, it's not going to be exactly the same. The, the beauty of that is you put your personal stamp on that. You're going to create it your way. And that's the beauty. And the world obviously needs it. So it does come down to self-belief. But we have a self-belief when we know that we are part of this immense, enormous, creative universe. And again, whatever you prefer to call it, and that we are born of that and we have that within us and we have that magic, we have that power to create what we need to create. And the more and more we know that, the more and more we live that, the more and more we align with that, then the more we are evolving as beings. For the viewers at home, where's a good place to start? Good place to start is to check in with themselves. So whenever anything is happening, good or bad again, just stop and check in with yourself and just say, how am I feeling right now? Because even when we're creating good stuff, you want to check in and, and ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? Because you want more of that, don't you? You want to feel that more and more. What, how am I feeling? What am I thinking? What are the sensations going on? How is my body feeling? What's showing up in my life right now, right? Good, I want more of that. And the same when it's not going as positive as you'd like it to go or there's situations, circumstances in your life that you'd like to change, stop. Just stop. Take a deep breath, check in with yourself and say, how am I feeling? What, what is happening within me? And let it come out and you'll probably find that there's always some kind of fear, some doubt, insecurity that's there. And that turns into, you know, fear. Nothing good comes from that really. Right. So if we can come from a place where we're loving the moment, a lot of good is going to come from that. So the more and more we can stop and ask ourselves, how am I feeling right now? Like what's going on within me and be totally honest, then the sooner we're going to get through whatever it is we're going through and get to the other side where we can start creating, you know, much more positive um, results or situations in our life but not only that we'll also look better I think we won't look so stressed and tired and frustrated you know and it just makes us happier people right because the more and more we're in a calm place the happier we are and so again we're going to make better decisions for ourselves and from making those decisions then we take action and we take positive action which is going to result in positive um, you know results basically so whereas if we make decisions from a fear standpoint, which under the heading of fear is lots of, you know, different uncomfortable situations, um, then if we make decisions from there and take actions from there, then the result cannot be uh, positive. You cannot have a positive result from a not positive journey. <laughs> you know what I mean? A negative journey will not provide a positive result.
So it's along the way. And we're always going to have that little setback. You know, you might be going along going, yes, 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 and punch in the air and going, I've got it, I've got it. And then something will happen. Someone will say something to you. Something will happen. And immediately we go straight into that autopilot, into that default. Oh, I'm not good enough or I'm scared or you're not feeling safe. or Whatever it is that triggers you. But becoming conscious about that, you know how to move through that faster. You're not going to sit in it, not going to stay in it uh, as, as long as you probably would and blame someone else. Daniela, that's such valuable information. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. If you'd like to know more about Daniela and personal evolution and conscious creation, please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeinginglifestyle.com.au. And after the break, we'll have another interesting guest with another interesting topic. Stay tuned. After the break, urban food specialist Mark Noyce will be talking about how to create your own urban edible garden. Welcome back. Our next guest is urban food specialist Mark Noyce and the topic we're here to, to discuss today is how to create your own edible garden. Welcome Mark. Hi Megan, thanks for having me. So Mark, what are some of the challenges we face in creating our own edible garden? I grew up on a market garden uh, myself and I had broad acre farming, I had all the farming tools asso associated with a big urban farm uh, and it took a lot of work. But I tell you, when you get into our urban environment where there's a concrete jungle, it's that much harder again to grow your own food at home. So some of the challenges are having the right space, having the right aspects so that you get the right light onto your plants because you know, let's face it, some plants need a lot more light than others. Lettuce might only need four to five hours a day, um, whereas tomatoes and some other sun-loving plants need up to 10 hours a day of sunlight. So they need to be in full sun. So that's a challenge, getting the light and the aspect right. Um, getting your nutrition right for your plants, getting the right nutrients in there, getting a high quality compost or a high quality potting mix. Uh, that's very important as well to keep that nutrition up to feed the plants. Uh, we all like to get fed well, so do our plants, and they need to get fed well too to get the best out of them. Another very important thing to remember is having access to water. Plants like water access all the time. If a plant doesn't get, and especially vegetables, if a plant doesn't get what they need in terms of water access, they go, I'm not going to be around here much longer. So I'm going to go to seed. I'm going to fulfill my life's mission and I'm going to just go to seed. And we call that bolting when a vegetable doesn't like uh, its water environment. It gets too stressed. It releases a little hormone that says, hey, go to seed. So getting that water right for your plants. You can either be out there watering all day, uh, you can be out there watering morning, noon and night just to keep that optimal water up to your plants uh, or you can uh, set your garden up much easier with uh, wicking garden beds for example. Mark, what are the benefits of having an edible garden? The benefits are just enormous in terms of your mental health, uh, in terms of your physical nutrition, in terms of you connecting with your, with your friends and family and your community. So let's have a look at those um, aspects of an urban edible garden. I love going out to my own garden and knowing where my food comes from, looking at these plants and watching them grow and being part of that and then understanding exactly what I put into those plants so that I know that I'm getting really fresh organic produce that is just uh, tasty and nutritious and just fantastic to eat. The benefits also getting involved in knowing where your food comes from and also communicating with your friends and family that maybe you haven't seen for a while. So let's grow some beetroots. Grow some beetroots and then make some beetroot relish and in a very small place you can grow three kilos of beetroot in two months in half a square metre, make a relish that can go to five or six people in your family. And your friends will love you. And not only that, you're 
getting a, so much satisfaction out of growing your own food. You're getting a lot of satisfaction about getting in contact with people that you might not have seen for a while. And you're starting that conversation again. You're increasing your mental health, you're helping others. And then you can give back something to your community as well. On a broader scale, you can grow food for your neighbours, you can get people involved uh, into a community garden, and you can just have uh, an enormous uplifting of self-confidence and community confidence about closing your, um, your nutrient loops, reusing water for food, and I'm just rambling on, I shouldn't have said that. Mark, can I grow the same plant over and over again? Well, you can, but if you don't do certain things to keep ensuring that the potting mix is fresh, uh, if you don't remove the uh, biomass that's, you know, the root systems, the, the stem of the plant, for example, you can't just keep planting in the same spot all the time. You know, it's gardening 101. You, know, you look at our farmers, our farmers turn over the soil and they recompost and they re-add nutrient and, and they just make sure that the, the growing media is fresh and optimal after every season that the vegetables come out of. We've got to do the same for our own environment, our own containerized growing in urban environments. So yes you can, but if you don't refresh your potting mix, if you don't deal with the biomass that's created when a vegetable puts its tremendous root systems uh, down, then you're not going to get the best out of it. And some plants really suck the nutrient out of potting mix. And let's face it, what a plant is doing is it's taking that energy that's in the potting mix and they're converting it into biomass uh, and something yummy that we like to eat. So it's just a big energy transfer. So when that vegetable's done, we've got to put more energy back into the soil. And that's through refreshing the compost, refreshing the potting mix with either nutrient, soluble fertiliser, uh, or some of our green waste. We can actually green, put our green waste back into the soil to grow more nutritious food. That's fantastic. So Mark, what's some advice you've got for our audience in creating their own edible garden? My advice would be to think about what you're going to grow. Think about where you're going to grow it thinking about what you're going to grow it in uh, and then make a plan. We need to also think about how we're going to manage our vegetable garden, uh, our edibles, by getting the right sunlight, getting the right aspect, protecting them from bugs uh, with either netting, protecting them to, from really harsh conditions like wind through netting and shade cloth, uh, and thinking about crop rotation, thinking about what am I going to plant in the potting mix after my tomatoes come out and maybe you put onions in there you know, and then you swap that over after you've reset your nutrition in your potting mix. Wow that's fantastic. Thanks so much for that great information Mark. If you'd like to know more about Mark Noyce and how to create your own edible garden please go to his webpage on our website healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au and that's all for us today so we'll say bye bye for now and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to know more about our show, please like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel.